This time on the America series, we're waking up in an abandoned mine and we're going exploring. We're going to rock crawl our way out of Death Valley and do something that I've never done before. Wheeling on some sand dunes. My name is Sean, and this is the story till now. The American series is brought to you by Epic Adventure Outfitters. White Rock Dodge. Rip Superchargers. And in part by... Part 3 of the America series has been brought to you by our friends at Omaze. Omaze is giving you guys the chance to win a totally custom Airstream Interstate 24X. Guys, this is a wicked adventure van. It seats six, sleeps two, has an air ride suspension, six all-terrain tires, a 42-inch light bar, an air conditioner, two exterior wash stations, solar power, a kitchen, a microwave, and yes, my friends, a full bathroom with sink, shower, and toilet, plus things I can't even list here because there's just too much cool stuff. If I won this van, I'd be heading straight back down to Death Valley and I'd just live in it. It would be awesome. The best part is your donations are gonna support the Jimmy Johnson Foundation. They are dedicated to helping children, families, and communities in need throughout the United States. So for your chance to win this custom Airstream Interstate 24X van and support a really great cause, Head over to omaze.com slash the story till now. Thanks, Omaze, for sponsoring this episode. weird blue box you've got going on uh, here. This is what we do with the leftover urine from each day. Yes. We put the urea into the diesel. It helps clean the environment. When you get about four liters of your urine, then you put it Jesus. in your, in oh, your tank. Red, that's good. In your death tank. This is what I'm talking about, guys. People who drive diesels, really weird people. And we're on day five of our America trip. Heck yeah. Everything's been going great. We've got another full day ahead of us. Of course, none of this would be possible with all, all the work that the guys from Epic Adventure Outfitters have put in on building these rigs and uh, making sure that they're super reliable and stable. And of course, Paul has been down here doing tons of tours over the last several years, so he knows all the best spots. He's taken us to some pretty epic locations, which is gonna continue today, isn't it, Paul? Or else, or else. <laughs> today, we're going to uh, continue down Golar Wash, and then we're gonna check out the uh, Manson family Barker Ranch there, where they uh, were oh, eventually good. caught. Sorry. Oh. You ran out of pee or what? Uh, that was too much urine. Mike and dribbled on urine, too deep. So, yeah, we're gonna end up hopefully at some dunes if we can uh, make good time. Dunes! Dunes! <laughs> <laughs> hmm. What kind of mine did we have here, Paul? I'm not really sure what they mined here. Um, could have been gold. They could mine right out the window here. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, like why build that house like a foot to the rock? Let's put a window against a cliff face. As you can see, it's a bit of a character home, but perfect for the right buyer. There's some pretty serious switchbacks up here driving up to this mine. So I'm gonna go on ahead and uh, scout it out. And then these guys are gonna come on up. Pretty nice views up here. There's a mine around here somewhere. Let me go find it. All right, you guys ready for the platform? 
I was born ready for the platform. I know. Uh, this is what you call a J-hook, so it's shaped like a J-hook. So basically they would come running along here, right? So the hook would be over here, and that's what they would essentially bring the, bring the buckets up. This was a transfer station, which we're going to go to now. The buckets would come up, they'd probably transfer them into another bucket, and then down to the mine it went, right? After spotting the shaft entrance down the mountain a bit, we're heading down to go exploring. Pretty cool shaft in the uh, stone mine. It's got like a wooden frame holding it up. Heading into this mine, we've been warned to watch out for rattlesnakes and black widows as they like to hang out in here. Fun. Yep. I'm going to say it looks really sketchy, so I'm going to go no. I've never before. We do not have lights, maybe? Okay, the ceiling is breaking. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, no thanks. I think we should call it now. Ceiling's a little soft. Really cool, though, with all the wooden supports and stuff. Still got the rails in it. Just to be in an old mine with the. Uh, like this support up here, look how it's jammed up in the rock. Yeah. Like just to hold it all together. It's awesome, man. Almost 100 years old to be in a mine like this. As we were heading back out, we spotted a fork with some light at the end of it and we decided to go exploring a bit. It's a weird way of putting nails on it up there. Oh, wow. Look at that, Chuck. It's an horseshoe right here. Look at this. It's probably a. Where are you going? How did you even get up there? Adventurer's paradise. Wow. Look behind it. Yeah. I don't know, but look all behind us. This is all just held up by the supports thing. That's cool. In one way, out the other. That's definitely the coolest mine I've been in. And we went in a cool mine already on this trip. <laughs> that was something else. All those wooden planks you can walk on. Now we're like scaling the edge of this cliff where we came out of this shaft. Ooh, these ones are sharp. Do not slip on these things. Man, we haven't even had breakfast yet. We've explored a two level mine, <laughs> driven on the edge of a cliff. It's kind of how we do it. It's kind of how we do it here. Just a normal Monday. Just a normal Monday. Paul says he knows of a cool old ranch further up the valley, so we're going to check it out. Something about a serial killer. Again, fun.
Alright, so we've arrived at the uh, infamous Barker Ranch. Last uh, hiding spot of Charles Manson. Charles Manson, yes. Charles Manson was one of the prolific serial killers in the late 60s. So the story goes that one lone FBI agent decided, no, I'm gonna take one last look everywhere. Is that a so, bone? Yeah, that's a bone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. <laughs> Looks like it used to be a nice place. Yeah, it was a nice place, yeah. Other than the the bone on the fireplace, which is well, that's just normal. quite uh, you gotta, disconcerting. You gotta have a bone. What a nice swimming pool here. Sure, nothing bad happened here. How's your swim, Ginger? <sighs> Dry. After taking in a little bit of history, it's time to make our way out of Death Valley. But we're not going to take the easy way. There's rocks to be driven over, and the Jeeps are hungry. making our way to a mountain pass and there's gonna be a little bit of rock crawly stuff here as we go. This section of trail actually took us several hours to make our way through, but a lot of the terrain was largely the same. So after a while, we just put the cameras aside and stuck to making some distance. Looks like we're rolling up to a cabin. A little off-road driveway, I like it. The honeymoon suite. The honeymoon suite. Your wife and you should have came here when you guys had the... Well, I don't want to shock you, it's very, very nice inside. It's probably the nicest place I've seen. <laughs> oh, wow. This is a newspaper from 19, September 26, 1915. The family that lived in this cabin? It's the family that lived in the cabin. That's Somebody cool. left a sealed cushion toilet seat. How nice. Stick your stickers at the time, so you'd have your book, and then you would get so many stickers to stick on for your war rations, for food wow. or whatever. It's really cool. That is really cool. Coffee. Calendar from January 1932. Just arrived at the dunes. The sun is starting to set, so we're gonna find ourselves a, a good place to camp. As we made our way out onto the sand, the sunset was absolutely incredible to look at. And we made our way up onto a dune to check it out. All right guys, we got out here on the dunes and our plan was to 
just uh, set up camp, but we saw the sunset behind the dunes. We were like, whoa, dunes. <laughs> and man, I gotta tell you guys something. I like dunes. Dunes are cool, but don't drive the dunes at night as we just kind of found out. It's not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to uh, hard to see. But shadows, uh, shadows are everywhere. Man, those sunset shots, <laughs> mind blowing. We're gonna get camp set up, have some dinner, and tomorrow we're gonna get back out on the dunes and uh, it's gonna be a good time. Feel the wind too? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Kind of felt like that. Oh, there's a big sandstorm that lasted pretty much all night until it was time to wake up and then it went away. <laughs> I slept, uh, I don't know, maybe three hours. Not good. In America, they put outhouses in the middle of the desert. I'm not gonna lie, I'm on board with this. Despite the lack of some good sleep, it was time to shred some dunes. This is my first time driving in sand like this, and there's definitely a learning curve to it, but it's an absolute blast once you get the hang of it. It's like uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Just out for a little morning dune rip. <laughs> Nothing unusual here, just normal stuff. Just a normal Tuesday. Just a normal Tuesday at the Happy office. Happy Tuesday, Paul. Happy Tuesday to you, Sean. Yeah, sucks being at work today. I know. I don't think anyone was happier to be out here on the dunes than Epic Mike. <laughs> Are you taking us into a sandstorm? Uh, yes, we're gonna go to the sandstorm to find some Tuscan Raiders. On part four of the America series, we're headed into a massive canyon and way high up into the mountains for our final night on the trip with the Epic Crew. 